Hi, I'm Greg Schnell, and I'm here with an educational segment for Osprey Strategic. I'm going to cover off the percentage price oscillator, which is my favorite indicator. This indicator is a tool that I use to help me not solely make my decision on, to help me make my decisions on um, buying or selling stocks, um, buying or selling indexes, working on all different types of asset classes, so commodities, currencies, uh, stocks and bonds. This is in no way a representation of something that will work for you all the time. This is not a buy or trade recommendation. This is literally an educational segment on how I use an indicator, how you choose to use it and any mistakes or decisions you make are your responsibility, not mine. Okay, so the agenda, what is the percentage price oscillator? The eight phases of the percentage price oscillator, changing PPO character and scanning for PPO. And so what is the percentage price oscillator? First of all, it's going to give us a wave pattern that looks like the MACD, but let's go to a chart now and start there. And then from that chart, we can start talking about these different things. So on the percentage price oscillator, this is the price of ARC, uh, the ETF that's been in the news at the time of, of recording here, we're May 24th, uh, 2022. And what I want to point out here is the PPO is down here at the bottom. So first of all, um, it, it basically gives you these two lines and one line, the black line in this case, is the actual PPO and the blue line is the signal line. So when it crosses above the signal line, we'd like to at least realize momentum is turning positive. And when it crosses below the signal line, we might want to um, lighten our position or at least be aware of a potential change. So uh, it, it behaves by having two different time frames, And in this case, 12 weeks, 26 weeks, and, and we use a nine week signal line. So what we're looking at is a shorter moving average. Let's just say the temperature in your house uh, might, might range from 50 to 80 over a one day period. And then over a five day period, you might have an average temperature. Now, if you live in Houston, that average temperature might be hotter than if you lived live where I live in Calgary, where the temperature is roughly about half of what Houston is today. So um, on any given day, we could we could create different temperature extremes, but in general, when you go look up a country's temperature, it'll say the average temperature for the month of June. So that's a you know 30 day period. Well, then in, in the stock market, what we're doing here is we're using the percentage price change, um, which is important, the price change, the percentage price change for a 12 week period and a 26 week period. Now you can also use this on a daily chart and an hourly chart and a 10 minute chart and a quarterly chart. My big perspective here is just to try and help explain how it works, but it works on all time frames, just the way it's calculated. So instead of using 12 weeks, it would use 12 days or 12 hours um, to create uh, one, one part of the calculation. So again, what does this do? If we have a slower period and a longer period moving average, the, uh, or sorry, yeah, faster and a slower uh, moving average, the fast one will turn over first. And so when we take the difference between 12 and 26, as they get closer together, um, these lines will, will change and it will actually start to roll over. Now, Sometimes it doesn't matter and it can go on for a month or two and it just goes sideways or it can actually break down and cross your signal line. Crossing your signal line is not necessarily a buy or a sell signal. It really comes down to making sure that um, we're starting to understand where we are on the scale. And so in this particular case, this scale goes all the way from minus 20 to plus 15. And what we want to be aware of is what's happening at any given time. So um, this PPO, I have it on my charts full time. Now I want to talk about the four phases of the PPO. And uh, then there's actually going to be two sets of four phases. And the reason is because um, whether you're above zero or below zero matters. So ARC was uh, ETF starting back in 2015. And 
and essentially uh, it was dipping down to start off and then it started to rally out of the hole and as it came out so this is a positive turn up under zero moves up it it almost crosses and we call this a kiss and go that's a positive thing where it tries to cross the signal line fails and keeps going the most beautiful part on the chart for me is something that was below zero comes up pulls back down, gets near zero, and then takes off to the long side. And that can be very, very important. So this is one of the things I like the most on the PPO. It's what I call my favorite setup. Doesn't always work. An example over here, we had the same thing. And then it only went on for a couple of months and then rolled back down. Took it for a few more months again, and then it took off. But you get the idea that you're looking for something particular. And what I'm looking for is was negative momentum and and it's okay to ride this trend up but on this big pullback here i'm starting to get real negative that it's not doing anything hasn't been able to break out and then the momentum changes and it took off for a huge run for for a whole year so um, without even caring what the what the ticker symbol is is all i want to know is what's the momentum and in this case it's very very positive so uh, we want to watch for that now you're going to go through these periods where it just stays up at a high level and goes sideways. So you're going to get signals, but again, everything is still fine here. So we can use the PPO um, to at least warn us that it's going to, and in this case, what it's doing is it's leveling out at a high level, kind of like driving 80 miles an hour. You're just staying at 80 miles an hour. And then it starts to make lower highs and lower lows. And this starts to be where we get more concerned. And then as it made lower lows here, it dips down and it goes below zero. And so we want to use the range of zero as a, a range, not an exact line. Um, so it could dip just below zero and then turn back higher and that would be bullish. Um, but essentially when we start to see a big uptrend breaking, the PPO making lower highs and lows, and now all of a sudden it's starting to break down, that's probably a pretty good clue that we'd want to at least protect profits or or make sure, especially after such a long run, a year and a half, that we've, we've got a way of protecting it, buying puts or whatever. Now you're into this period of chop and that's a really hard period, uh, but each one of these would have been trading opportunities for relatively big moves both ways. But then we come here and we have the same thing, a negative comes around, pulls back to around the zero line and then takes off for a moonshot. And this was coming off the bottom of COVID and off it took off. And that was great. And then what happened was it, it fell from this lofty peak, broke the trend line. You're at a very elevated level. So normally I, you would be trying to take profit after reaching such a high, high level. Um, typically, we're going to find a lot of stocks are in the area of 5% or 10%, and there are a few that will go to extremes. This was one of them. But when that extreme is over, you want to be cautious. So then it moved into a sideways consolidation for all, for around six months and just laid down here on the zero line. So it didn't have much momentum either way. But then it broke down. And when it breaks down below zero, this can move really fast. And in this case, that was a pretty good example. Over here, this was a pretty big move down in 2016. So you get these really big cases of, of extreme movements. And the point I want to make is not only do I like just having the value of it. Um, so in this case, minus 20 is terrible. Um, basically, it's out of love. Um, but what I would try to do now, in this case, I would have drawn a trend line like this across them. And I do like when the trend line breaks out. So here we broke out, pulled back steeply. And again, this was COVID. So this might have just continued on going, but COVID came along, changed everything, pulled down, and then turned right back up again after the COVID uh, bottom was made in the stock market and ran. Well, now we have the other indication, which is a, a trend this way. So I probably don't want to enter this, even if it starts to make a turn up here, probably like it to come up, turn up, bounce, and then maybe make a higher low after such a, a big negative sell-off. Okay, so hopefully that gives you some ideas of how to use it. But when it's negative and declining, it's awful. When it starts to make a bottom down there, that's helpful. Um, when it's close to zero, that can actually be a trading bottom. When it's really sold off like this, you're probably going to find that it does make a wave and then it makes a higher 
low. And when it does that, um, typically that might be the better bottom to, to buy rather than the ultimate bottom. Because a lot of times you'll see this will make a low, then it makes a higher low, but price will make a lower low. And that might give you a better opportunity. And I also like it when a big trend in momentum changes, that would be something I'd look for. So hopefully I've, I've described all of those circumstances. Up is positive always. Um, up above zero is really positive. Buying it just as it turns up above zero or turning above zero is really positive. Buying it after it has been below zero turns up, comes back down to tests and then take off again. That can be very profitable. Again, we don't know if you're going to end up in a period of chop like this, but I particularly like where the a PPO trend is breaking and then you can get involved. Okay, let's go look at some of the other charts I've set up here just to show you that it uh, doesn't matter um, which chart we're looking at, we can take some big clues. So here's Facebook. What we can see on Facebook, it originally started off um, coming out of this hole as the PPO started just after the IPO and then it started to turn higher. So here we are above zero, pulls back below zero, takes off and makes a big beautiful move. And then we had a really long period where the momentum was dying, but this was way up at 17% at the top and it continued to work its way higher. It was very, very strong. The chart was up trending. So we draw a line under here. The PPO starts to roll down to zero, bounces one more time and then gives it all up and falls apart. Now this was the um, two periods in here. This was the tariff tussle with China. And so we end up having a big overall market pullback. And then at the bottom, nice place to get back on board, the COVID low nice place. And in general, we can see that, that uh, Facebook has stayed above zero for the whole time, really with the exception of, an, of a big stock market decline 20% during the tariff tussle and the COVID dip. But now what we see is it's really out of favor. And again, just being aware of the PPO going below zero, you draw your trend line, this thing isn't holding up, might tell you to help you get out earlier than just letting it kind of decline. And we've got some other charts that, that are good examples of this. Okay, so here's Amazon going back to 1998. And you can see um, after the big huge surge in 99, 2000, it stayed below zero for two years. And again, this is the higher low I talk about well, price made a lower low. And when you see that higher low, that's a nice place to get on board. So we'd like that. And then, you know, these are big changes, right? This is $12 to $60, 500% um, meaningful moves upward. <laughs> uh, and then it goes sideways for years. We don't get to pick how all that works out. But in general, the PPO goes negative for this 2004 to 2006 period where commodities did well and tech didn't do that great. So it's out of favor and it comes back into favor, makes a big run. You really had to be in just for, I'll call it a year. And then it broke down hard for a year. It doesn't look like much, but these are, you know, this was $94 to 37. So a 60% pullback. And then it, it got out of bed and kept going and it stayed positive all of this time. And now it's broken down big. So my big concern here is, can it start to turn its way back up? Well, the one thing I'll say is the long-term trend is broken and the PPO is behaving like we're in a bigger drop zone, um, either the 2000 or the 2009, but it's definitely not the wiggles we saw anywhere in the last 12 years. So that just gives you an idea that something has dramatically changed and you might need to wait for a better market setup overall market setup. So here's Apple, another big tech story. And again, the same thing, the PPO when it's below zero was a pretty good clue to get um, out of the way. And then we look over here and right now, currently at the time of the video, uh, we're right around the zero level and we've got a big giant uptrend here. Now, if this is all going to start to break, then these, it gives us a clue that we're in for something much more major. Microsoft, same thing. You can see after the 2000 period, it broke down, it really didn't do much all through 2003 to 2005. PPO stayed below 2.5%, no real kind of up thrust. And then 
in 2011, it changed over to Satya Nadella for, for the leader of the company. And then almost the whole period here for 10 years, it stayed above zero. And now it's pulled down to the lowest level since 2008 when it was dropping. So to me, this tells me there's a definite trend change on the stock and we want to be aware of something different. And I've got some other charts that will play this up a little bit more. So here's a commodity stock. And again, commodities run up and pull back and run up and pull back and run up and pull back. They don't have these big long trends like technology. So if you like to trade in and out and capture fast profits, um, commodity stocks are, are fantastic for this. So here's uh, 2001 to 2008. This thing was a 20x mover. And then obviously a sudden drop and then a huge move up uh, 10x or something like that, 5x, and then a big drop. So you get the idea. They're really big swings. But when this is above zero, it's usually a good place to try and buy near the, the zero line. And if it's going to fail, then you just want out. And right now we're sitting at one of those points where it ran up, pulled back, rolled over, and looks like it wants to fail. So we have this setup sitting here. We have a similar setting up set up in 2011-12 where it um, rallied up, pulled back, and then as it tried to make the next market high, um, it, it barely bumped up around zero and then fell away and then stayed negative for years. So you can use the PPO just to help you be aware of kind of the condition you're in when you're testing that zero line. It's a pretty important place. But to me, this big thrust here tells us that we're probably in a different environment and we should be watching for more upside just because it's a total change of character for anything we've seen on the chart before. And the last time we had one of those big character thrusts in 2004, it was also it was still choppy trading, but it was also a period of a big bull market. And you want to use that overall sentiment to your advantage. Here's ExxonMobil. And again, uh, it goes through a period where it's loved, so the PPO is never below zero, then it's below zero for a couple of years, then it's loved for five years, then below for three years, above for five years, below for a year. And you can see the idea. Now, amazingly, is look how this thing has really changed. So obviously, when commodities went near zero, this sold off really, really hard. It made a higher low. I talked about that earlier. As price comes down to test the prior low, it might go lower, might stay higher. But your idea here is to try and find a big change in momentum. And then it took off to the upside. That's pretty huge. And now it's trying to, it, you know, it might end up making lower highs here, but at a very high level. So it could continue on like we've seen before. Or you might find that this ends up generating a sell signal. So if you draw your trend line in here and your momentum wave starts to roll over again, you might want to lighten your position size, take profits, but just be aware that you were at an extreme twice here and you could draw an uptrend on your PPO. And if that big uptrend starts to break and it rolls over, we don't know what's in store at the time, but it's telling us that investors are starting to pause on the stock after a huge run and that uh, they do that. Um, so when it pulls back, then you're at least prepared to take profits. Okay. Now I've pulled up a bank here. And again, so I had technology that soared to the moon and back. And then I had um, commodities that regularly rotate. And, and commodities are wonderful for trading, not wonderful for buy and hold. But here's, here's JP Morgan. And I think the, the chart tells us more than we can imagine if we if we didn't even have the price data on the screen, we can see that JP Morgan was terrible in this period from 2000 to 2002, was bullish in this period from 2003 to 2007, was negative through 2008, and then 2009 it it wobbled in around here. These were wild swings, but eventually price started to work out and it stayed above zero for five years or four years, then dipped down briefly. Same thing stayed above for years. Now you have to decide where you want to get off this. But for me, 
I really want to kind of either take it at a very high PPO level or draw a trend line under it. And then when it's starting to break my trend lines, I want out. But I definitely don't want to hold when these things are plummeting below zero after having a euphoric rise. And that, that would be something that would get me pushed out. Okay, so I've tried to talk about the different scenarios of how to use it, how I use it. Again, I want to find places where it turns up. I want to find places where it turns up above zero. Those can be really nice profitable trading. And then when, when commodity markets fall apart, and they do every few years, most people are afraid to buy near the lows. Well, the best part about commodities is that's what they do. They go really low and then they go really high. And so we, we need to play that swing on commodities. Now, banks are, I'll call it a little bit more normal, but they still have the same um, swing. And so whether it's a bank or a technology or a currency or a uh, commodity, you're looking for the swings in the market and you're using tools to try and help you. So once you have these tools all set up and we can go to a daily chart. And on this daily chart, here's my PPO at the bottom. So you can see this big downtrend In these, in the um, momentum indicator, the PPO, and it's below zero, but it's actually starting to make a higher low in, in the PPO indicator compared to this low, even though price is lower. So that's the kind of positive divergence we want. When we can, and I call it a best fit line, when we draw a best fit line through our previous peaks and it looks like it wants to start to turn and and go higher. All of these are good clues for me that the trend is at least changing or trying to change. And so then we can get back on board. So when we looked on the weekly chart, the trend was ugly. Well, on the daily chart, it looks like it's starting to improve. And that could give us a clue to try and get back on board sooner. So um, don't be afraid of the uh, of the indicator going below zero. It's actually a place um, to, to use it to try and find a trend. And then as it starts to turn, I like to get back on board with it. Okay, so one more thing that we can do is we can actually scan. And I just set up two very simple scans here. Top line says it's a US stock, or it's from the US, it's a stock. And it's got a scooter ranking. And this scooter ranking basically just gets rid of stocks that are too small to to be included in indexes or uh, that type of thing. And then the weekly PPO line crosses above the weekly PPO signal. So I described those as a, a signal line. And so here we have a um, Exxon Mobil, I think this is, is starting to turn up. And as it crosses back up, it's going to give us a buy signal on our scan. And so we could run this scan just saying, show me something that's turning up this week. And when it does that, we run this scan and it gives us 17 results. So let's just go look at a chart and then sure enough, we're going to put it on weekly because that's what we've asked it to do. And so here's the signal on a weekly chart, declining, declining. We could draw a trend line up here. And basically when this trend is starting to change, I want to start getting involved in the stock. So this is Cummins. And, you know, we can draw a downtrend in price here, but I want the momentum to improve first. And the first sign would either be a signal that it's crossing its signal line to get us on board, or we wait until it goes above zero. And, and typically that can give us a nice ride after that point. Really depends on how you want to trade it. And the second way to do this would be rather than scanning for it crossing the signal line, which was the blue line on the chart, we could scan for just crossing above zero. And when we run that scan, in this case, we only got one stock. Um, so go look at it and again, put it on weekly. And what we're looking for is the PPO. This is nice, was below zero coming up, just trying to turn back up right around zero. That could you know, make a nice run higher. So for me, th those are different tools and how I could use them. So hopefully that helps explain how I use the PPO 
and scanning for it, changing the character. So going from negative momentum below zero to positive momentum. All of these are valuable things to be uh, watchful for. And as the whole market starts to shift, you can imagine if all of the PPOs start to turn up like they did at the bottom of the COVID low, how much of a clue that would be that the whole market is turning up. So try and think about using the PPO, not just on a stock by stock basis, but how many. So in that case, I had 17 on the scan. What if all of a sudden I had 500 on the scan? That tells you that the market is starting to change character. Okay, with that, thank you for taking the time to watch. Hopefully that helped educate you about the PPO. I plan on doing a few more of these educational series and uh, hopefully you'll get time to watch them. Thanks, bye-bye. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.